The problem is the monopoly game, which is controlled by the Federal Reserve, the private bank, which is actually controlled out of London, is manipulating all the dollars to put them out, put more and more people into debt. So the illusion of equity they have in real estate is coming apart. The players that are uh, analyzing everything are expecting massive foreclosures next year in the beginning of what we call the recession that you, it's going to be worse than 29. Look okay. your house yep. that you're living in. You think That's you right. own it. You don't. Right. You have contractual right to transfer the airspace subject to you paying taxes to the state. Right. Or the Global 2000 discussions that we had. The real problem that they have, as Kissinger says, is there are just too many people on the planet. And 40% of the world, two, 2 billion of us, exist on less than $2 a day. The summary of the Global 2000 report I put up on my website, nohoax.com, right. but uh, if you look at it, it makes sense to get rid of people. So they, what they said, they're going to make godlike decisions on who lives and who dies. Now, obviously, uh, some of the meetings we set on, we were planning on using neutron, neutron bombs on the major cities because that contains most of the, what they call... You actually heard this? I said it on the meetings. I was in the game big yeah. time. I, yeah. In fact, I was making such a mess, they decided rather than kill me, which they could, uh, they just invited me into the inner group and asked me to be the finance chairman. And at that point, I probably would have been in, you know, secretary of the treasury or something, whatever they wanted to do with me. Uh, what I was doing prior to that, so, you know, making it right, I would volunteer to become a president of a company and I'd go in and liquidate it. And we'd get rid of the expendable containers. That was my job. Expendable and containers meaning human beings? That's right. Yeah, that, it, it's amazing. That's well, that was the inside a vernacular, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, that's what we used at that time. I mean, it went from there to useless eaters today, so you're happy with it. You're a human resource. So, right. Which, you know, all you are is part of the commodity, even in the, in the business sense. You look at it, you have a cost. Labor, what is labor? Yeah. human resource right. when you're going to put together some kind of product. Well, the inside of the game, when we started to use new trombones, today they figure that biologicals are much cheaper. Mm -hmm. They're still planning on, the plan is to get a war start in the Middle East, and they're still planning on using a neutron bomb or a, one of the bombs that they've got developed on Israel, mm -hmm. and that's to begin uh, World War III, mm -hmm. which is all on the cards. And it's, it's going to happen. I, yeah. Yeah, they even put a monument up to this whole program. It's mm -hmm. called the Georgia Guidestones. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, oh, yeah. Outside of Atlanta. You right. know, and they've got it all set down there. It's all in eight languages. They want it, they, it, basically, it's fait accompli as far as they're concerned. It's just to get the thing going in the Middle East, and it's not going fast enough. I mean, Carter put this thing in, so we have the Plan 2000, with the war starting in the year 2000 in the Middle East. Right. Reduce the population of the planet down right. to 500 million, have one world currency under the uh, Homeland Security, or FEMA, if you want to call it. Um, they're going to declare an emergency, which you're going to shut down everything. Uh -huh. My friends, my CIA associates, I don't even call them friends anymore. CIA is crooks in action. Yeah. They're, all <laughs> they're all professional liars. Yeah. I mean, they they got to be if they have that job. Yeah. So that you have to look at what they're doing. Anyway, they're so concerned, they're leaving the country too. Most of them are going to Latin America. Uh, meanwhile, they're closing in every day right now just closing in to make it so we're going to be set up in these enemy prisoner war camps. I published a book. It's called Chaos in America. Mm -hmm. In it, I was asked to build an enemy prisoner war camp. I put the contract in this book. So you can read it for yourself. This is in downtown Las Vegas, right on the railroad tracks. It says enemy prisoner war camp. They're all on top. And they're building them all the way across the United States right now. Bush signed an executive order um, taking the old forts and the army places that we shut down to get those organized to hold the so-called dissidents. Now, what's the definition of a dissident? And the problem is that we're going to enslave ourselves because most of the people want to keep having food coming in and you're going to follow the line. You're just walking yourself into your own prison camp. Then we're going to come down to the extermination, just like World War II. Right. Well, Phil, Phil and I have lectured together. I know Phil Snyder. He's dead now. He's, you know. Yeah, I know he's dead. And so what, what, what about what he was saying about the number of bases at that time? I think it was 129 bases before he died. Underground had already been built. Is that all for the elite? Yeah. Really? What are they going to do with the rest of the people? They just get rid of them, leave them above ground and be radiated. Now, my son happens to be a nuclear physicist. Mm -hmm. Spent the last three and a half years in a secret city in Russia. 
They're about 12 years ahead of us. They have 22,000 nuclear warheads. And, of course, we're the target. The Soviets have uh, three nuclear submarines on the West Coast and three on the East Coast. They're about two football fields in length, five stories tall, and they all are nuclear power and nuclear and ain't there major cities. Okay. West Coast gone. Well, because the plan is the Northern Hemisphere is where they're going to release the nuclear bombs, and the theory was mm -hmm. that the winds from the North Pole that are coming down, because that's increasing drastically, right. will go to the equator, and there will be very little spillover because of the reverse of the winds because mm -hmm. of the Southern Hemisphere. Okay. So therefore, the nuclear radiation here will be a lot more than the Southern Hemisphere. And this is a fait accompli, you believe? Oh, they really? think so. Oh, yeah, they think they won. That's the reason why they don't bother about me talking about it. They don't care whether you know or not. What are you going to do about it? And you have no idea what China is until you go over there for yourself. Yeah. With a billion, three hundred million. You understand almost, well, a little over four times our population. Right. It's, you know, I spent some time over there with, and I had some government friends. It, it, they think they're going to, what they're going to do is let the West uh, go have its fight. And then they, they want to clean up. They say it's been 5,000 years. We want to run the world when we get through. And what they're doing? Acquiring all the assets. Mm -hmm. They figure yeah. that yeah. Canada and the United States, the property there will, uh, the food growing areas, will be enough to take care of their people. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're looking at. Why are they, I mean, they bought So oil the U.S. will become a resource. Yeah. Whatever's left of it. Whatever's left of it, yeah. Yeah. Um, you seem to be in a unique position to be able to put a fair amount of this together, which is, which is quite interesting. Well, I'm, I walk my talk. I played the game. You played the game. You know that you know one level of it. And I know. I and I used, like I say, I used to play around with the world leaders, so I know what yeah. they're planning on doing. What so change of heart? What happened in you that made you decide to share this information? That happens, it happens at the inside levels. Well, it, it come back to a, a, a moral situation that happened to me, I think. Uh, when I was, I flew to Aspen, uh, I brought my two daughters up there so they could go, you know, go skiing. And I, when I was, uh, I was invited to this meeting, when I walked into the room, the world leaders were there, and that's when they asked me to be the finance chairman. As they said, we'd like you to be the finance chairman for the next president of the United States. And the first thing I asked is, why me? And they said, well, we owe you a favor. Remember I told you I volunteered to be president of companies as right. I went down. and then you liquidate, yeah. I didn't charge them anything for it. It was just a game. I see. And they, anyway, that's what they said. So I thought you'd be good on the team, yeah. I'd be good. I'd be a team player. I just mm -hmm. did it because it was, you know, another one of these things. So I, next thing I asked them, I said, well, wait a minute. You know, I just started this $100 million project. And they said, don't worry about it. We'll put it on ice. And I said, okay, who with? And I said, well, you can do that. Uh, then I said the next thing was, who is going to be the next president? Now, this is two years before he became president. Right. And they said Jimmy Carter. And I said, Jimmy who? And they said, well, he's the Democratic governor of Georgia. And I said, I've been voting Republican. And Paul Volcker said, son, don't worry about it. We control them both. Yeah. And I said, well, I got the next question is, what does a finance chairman do? Yeah. You know, I, I haven't been doing that. I've been playing all this other stuff. And they said, will you sit down with Ted? And so I sat over with Ted Kennedy. He's sitting right next to me. Mm -hmm. And Ted and I are, to talk, you know, he's just joking. He says, George, you're going to love this job. You're really good with money. We're going to send you out to all the state Democratic functions to raise money for the National Democratic Party. And he said, you're going to meet some real foxy ladies. And just then, my daughter walked in. Mm -hmm. Ted looked at her and he says, wow, I want to go to bed with that. I says, no, you don't, Ted. That's my daughter and she's 14. And his response to me was, I don't care. Mm-hmm. I was livid. I really didn't know what to do. So it was that moment well, of that minute, it, insult. That was part of it. Yeah. I got up and I walked across the room. Yeah. I then talked to Pierre Trudeau and his wife, mm -hmm. who was the Prime Minister of Canada mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting in front of them with a little half cigar box full of white powder. And then I'm looking around the rest of the room. I said, my God, something hit me at that point. If the world leaders have to resort to this, I don't think I want to be part of this thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, even in even to the Pretty dark. even to the pollution and getting everything else they're talking about getting rid of all the other people. I mean, I was raised in a packing house and slaughtering animals, and you get to the point where people are just animals at that level. And then I found out a little bit more about the details of the the Plan 2000 of the annihilation of the entire planet. I said, I got to stop these people. There's something there. I mean, it's just yeah, they got to be stopped.